guys welcome to my channel if this is your first time thank you so much for clicking please just click that subscribe button quickly if this is not your first time thank you so much for coming back my workplace we were doing a training to move into another work stream we're done with the training and then we didn't have the work to start doing that's why i read all the gq editions that my colleagues bring and everything i was looking at let's just read something and then i found this book on my colleague's desk he had this one and then another book on feng su something like feng su or something like that i think it has to do with the spirit of building your home like you know when you according to them like you don't put the door to your car or something like you just had something on how you place things in the home and i just thought it'd be boring i just pushed that aside and i saw this this book looked like something i'd seen somewhere or heard about before so i was like you know why not just read it and then you guys i was reading and reading and just moving pages it was really insightful so the title of the book is how to win friends and influence people by dale carnegie most of the information i got was really really useful and i thought it was something that i should share with you guys the book is an easy read it's just that it has a lot of stories you don't really really have to read all the stories but the stories kind of explain the point they're trying to um, buttress and then who is this book for you read the title you think is uh, someone that wants to just be so popular or no it is your relationships with your partner your you know intimate partner or whatever your friendships your relationship with family um it, it work relationship your subordinates you as a leader yeah it just covers like you and uh, you know relating with people basically like from the smallest to the highest to the most important to the least important person just the way you relate to them just bringing out the best in such the relationships book is divided into four parts the first part has three segments the second part has six segments the third part has 12 segments and then the fourth part has nine segments so you can see he put it in threes or he or she deal yeah the guy segments in multiples of threes so what i've done was to just grab the important bits of every segment try and see like if i can remember any of the stories you know to um share with you part one is the techniques in handling people that one has um three parts so I'm just going to read some quotes or some things I think you can easily understand and just digest. So the first one, an animal rewarded for good behavior would learn much more rapidly and retain what it learns far more effectively than an animal punished for bad behavior. When you want to correct someone, it's better you actually tell the person you're doing good in something, you're doing good in something, and the person wants to be better than just always saying you're doing bad in something so this thing you know it goes with even your partner like you can be in a relationship with someone and then anytime he does something or she does something you don't like you're complaining about it meanwhile you've never actually said thank you or you've never actually said oh i like the way you do this thing i like you know when they're doing something so it's actually very annoying when you always try to make someone feel like they're not up to it Meanwhile, they, they actually do good things, but you just highlight the bad ones. By criticizing, we do not make lasting changes. Rather, we incur resentment. Another one, when dealing with people, let us remember that we are, not, we are not dealing with creatures of logic. We are dealing with creatures of emotions, creatures bristling with prejudices and motivated by pride and emotion. So it's just the same thing they're trying to portray, that people have pride, emotion. So you're just trying to, if someone does something that just irritates your whole life. Like the other day, my friends told me, like, how can I do something that I'm just disgusted? How life? And she just said, oh my God, I'm like, you calm down when you're telling so because th when you just react like that because you already just feels calm jesus like too much pride too much ego they wouldn't even want to admit what they have done is wrong do you get so there's a way you just everybody's different people have different backgrounds something that might irritate you so much might not be irritating someone so much so just take time and just explain to the person why this thing you know you don't like it or whatever instead of just making a person feel so stupid that they've done something that you know to them is normal but to you is actually like quite disgusting will speak no ill of no man and speak all the good I know of everybody. This is something I always try to live by. Like people, it's so easy to judge. Someone might not be doing something the way you do it, and you just judge. Everybody has a good path. Forget how bad someone is, or how mor morally, you know, whatever you think someone is. They have a good side. Highlight it. Any fool can criticize. Most fools do, but it takes character and self-control to be understanding and forgiving. Yes, just take time to, you know, understand where someone is coming from. You'll be able to deal with them better. But instead of condemning people, let's try to understand them. Let's try to figure out why they do what they do. To know is to forgive all that is so important and this is very self-explanatory so the summary of this um section is don't criticize condemn or complain he told the story of a pilot who was flying a plane i think when he was flying when he was like mid-air he realized that the plane was jerking and then he just had to quickly land so while he was jerking he realized he just thought that come i'm sure they put jet fuel instead of some of that kind of fuel the right fuel and when he landed he went to the mechanics phase like, and then the guy was already like so sad like the guy was like begging you know he in his mind like they already sacked him 
the captain was like, I already see your remorse. I'm like, the have it. to even show you that I see your remorse, you're going to fix my private jet at home tomorrow. This is just to show you that I know that you would never make that mistake again. Like, just imagine if it was you, like, you probably like sat the guy, you know, but he already knew the guy would never do this again. And he didn't even raise his voice at the guy. He was like, in fact, you're going to repair my own. So he knew that this guy is going to bring a hundred, like, the next time. So, um, the, the second part was from legal codes, like, everything you do springs from two motives. The sexual urge and then the desire to be great. Okay, that's the quote by Sigmund Freud. Okay, every man I meet is my superior in some way. In that, I learn of him. So this is a quote by Emerson. Basically just saying that no matter who you meet, no matter how low the person is, there's something you have to learn from the person. So just take the person that's come. This person knows something more than me. And then um, give honest and sincere appreciation. Okay, there's this man in the farm that used to like feed the men in the farm. One day, they came to open their food and they saw, hey, horse food inside their place and they now came and said shouting at her she's like since i've been feeding you guys you guys have never said thank you today that you now saw hey you're, you're not coming to shout let's know the story just you know always show appreciation to people but so because this thing is getting really long <laughs> yeah so the third bit of this part is action springs uh, springs out what we fundamentally desire so basically if something someone is doing something you don't like instead of like using your words to correct them you can actually do the right thing and they will notice you doing the right thing and then every day and then in business first arousing the other person and eager ones instead of you Know, just telling someone do this do this do this make them know that doing it is for their own good do you get it will help them just want to do it so an eager want is like an eager need to do it like let them know that come this thing they're doing like instead of them telling someone you know finish this work because um we need to make profits you can just say something like finish this work because it might help you with your you know just try and connect it to the person's own good and then trust me they will do it so let's go to part two part two has six different points and then a part two is like ways to make people like you so i'm just going to run through this quickly it says you can make more friends in two months by becoming interested in people that you can in two years by getting people to be interested in you so it basically says that you know it, like when you meet people just try and ask them questions try and get to know them and listen respond accordingly not that they're just talking and you're just like try and listen like when, when people Things that you're interested in them, you get way more from them. So that's the most important. That so you said the summary is become genuinely interested in other people, and then the second one I think that that's more about smiling. It just says smile, like um you don't feel like smiling. There are two things: force yourself to smile or hum a tune. So it's always good to you know to wear a smile. My default way used to be like bony. Like there's sometimes I have to be practicing how to just be more approachable, not even approachable, just be more decent on the face like not to look too scary you know because it's good always smile the third one and um, one of the simplest and most obvious the important ways of gaining goodwill is by remembering names remembering people's names that's such a good thing like anytime we're doing training you see a room of 20 people they're meeting us that day and then they, when they're asking questions like stephanie you know abel you know they actually call your first names and it was just you that just told them the first name as you came in so that is such a good skill because it makes people feel that they are important imagine you just leading a group of like so maybe some young interns and then you come to them and you just call irene you know you call their first names they actually just feel calm this person actually regards me this is such an important thing so remembering names be a good listener encourage people to talk about themselves so that's the summary of that one the fifth one is talk in terms of other people's interests so this is related to that person i said when um, aroused and eager ones like when you're talking to someone about something just be looking at it from their point of view something that will benefit them it will make them come through for you trust me because they just feel that come this person has my interest at heart always make the other person feel important talk to people about themselves so they will listen for hours like just keep asking people questions and they'll just keep talking and talking about themselves so the summary of this whole part is to make the other person feel important and do it sincerely not just you know you're, you're done talking you're never listening or you don't even really care you're not even like they tell you something <laughs> so it's like something related you're saying another we're done with part two so let's go to part three part three has 12 parts we're going to hurry up with this as well so this is how to win people to your way of thinking without stupidly arguing like an argument tito So the first one you can't win an argument that's exactly the first one you can't because if you lose it you lose it if you win it you lose it why because the loser may resent you like no matter how you think uh, you've argued and argued and argued and you won the point yeah that person is the, maybe the person just said or the person will just uh, now start hating you or something you get so you never really win an argument that's said uh, the tips welcome disagreements distrust your first impression control your temper yeah when you're arguing control your temper listen look for areas of agreement when you argue argue with someone even if what you know that you know what you guys are saying just listen to what the person say pick up the parts that you think are similar to what you're saying so that's what it says be honest and promise to think over your opponent's 
um, idea. So like instead of forming, I'm doing, I'm doing, I try and think about promise that you're gonna, you know, think about their a way of thinking because really you always had your way. The person has just got a new way. Calm down, listen to it, think about it. You might actually buy into that way. So and then postpone actions to give you both time, both of you time to think about um, the problem. So yeah, postpone obviously like whatever th you guys are arguing about, just postpone you know the results of it or the action you know that's supposed to lead to it, so that both of you think about it. So the summary is there's no way under the high heaven to get the best argument. The best way <laughs> to get the best argument is to avoid it. So basically to avoid argument. The second point was show respect for other people's opinion. Never say you are wrong. That's a very very good point. The fourth one, um, begin things in a friendly way. So you can just say, ah, let's sit down, take hands all together. We differ from each other, but you know, just be friendly with the way you start, um, you know, conversation or anything you're trying to do. The fifth one, in talking with people, do not be, do not begin by discussing things on which you differ. This is kind of related to the other one. So get the other person saying yes, yes, yes. Me. So say, talk, start with the things both of you agree on. So they will just be, you know, almost on board. Yes, 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 yes. And then before you know, you chip in your own point. So the sixth one, let the other person do a great deal of the talking. Very important. Um, the seventh one, let the other person feel like the idea is his or hers. So people already know how to steal ideas. Like you just be somewhere talking about something, and then the person is arguing. Like before, the person has even stolen the idea you <laughs> you took in the first place, and you just be like, okay, whatever. So yeah, this thing says you know, just let the person feel the idea is them is theirs. So you try and relate with what the person is saying to what you want to happen and then it should just be as if it's them that actually brought up the idea of what something you actually want to get done. So the eighth one is try to honestly see things from the person's from other person's point of view. We've talked about that. Be sympathetic towards the um, towards the other person's ideas and desires. We talked about that as well. And the tenth one, the person usually has two reasons for doing things. One that sounds good and the real reason. So it says when no information can be secured about someone's motive, just try and stick to the one that is honest and sincere. You know, don't don't give someone the benefit of doubt. In fact, that's just the summary of this. A appeal to the nobler motives that just give people the benefit of doubt that they're actually trying to be good. There was one time one year, like my resolution was actually to be looking at people with a side eye, like anybody that wants to do to think of things in a negative way. Maybe you should keep that thought in your mind, but when you're expressing you know, something to someone, just give them the benefit of the doubt that come, I trust you're going to do the right thing. Even if your own mind, you want to be pessimistic about it. So dramatize your ideas. I think that's just being like creative and stuff. And then the last one, the way things, to, the way to get things done is to stimulate competition. A desire to excel in a kind of way. So something like, okay, they, they're not giving a story of the day and night shift. So people were, that were on the day shift, after they finished doing a certain amount of work, they wrote the amount of the numbers on the floor. And then when the night shift people came, they said, eh, this will be 12 today. In fact, they will now come and try and do 15, something like that. So just try and stimulate competition, healthy competition amongst people. That this is when you're like a leader. The summary of that is to throw down a challenge. So that's it for part three. Let's let's part four. So part four, the title of part four is being a leader. How to change people without giving offense or arousing resentment. So this is kind of like a summary of every other point we have talked about. So there are nine of them. If you must find fault, begin with praise and honest appreciation. We have mentioned that. Uh, call attention to people's mistakes indirectly, which is so important for people's ego. The third one is talk about your own mistakes first before criticizing other people. So people do it a lot. Like my teenager, let's say you're, you're having a problem with a case and so she's like, when I was the case handler, I actually, you know, did this wrong, you know? That's how you come across to people because they feel like, come, it's not just me, like, it's like, most of these things, I actually see it a lot in my team leader. She's, um, her name is Claire, shout out to Claire. Fourth one, no one likes to take orders, ask questions instead of giving direct orders. This is so my way, like, and I learned this thing coming to this country. When people want to you to do something, especially my friend Olga, like, she shows like, somewhere, she's like, Stephanie, should we go? Meanwhile, she actually wants to do it, but she says it like, should we go? No, let us go. Like, you know, commanding, say, should we go? You see, that be like, Olga wants to do this thing. I'm like, yes. It's not be like, it's you that said yes, but she actually wants to this so that is such a way that's something i always do like you just ask should we should we should we the fifth one is let the other person say face so a few minutes thought a considerate word or two a genuine understanding of the person's attitude would go um so so far toward elevating a sting yeah so this is still talking about the whole ego thing and yeah just like you know just telling people things you know calmly the sixth one is um, praise this life as improvement and praise every improvement. Be hearty with your approbation and lavish in your praise. So be calm with your criticism and be big and stuff with your praise. The seventh one, give a dog a good name. If you want to improve a person in a certain respect, act as that particular trait was already one of them. Once I want to start doing something, the person like, yes, I see this thing, this good thing in you. So the person will be able to like live up to it. Um, make the fault seem easy to correct. Use the encouragement. So when someone, someone is doing something wrong, just be like, ah, this is something that we have ever do those as well. You know, how about you just change it? <laughs> 
make people glad to do what you want that's this is that this that um arouse and eager want be sincere know exactly what it is the person wants to do be empathetic consider the benefits they'll get this thing is really summarizing a lot of things we've talked about and um, in summary for this part four it says make the other person happy about doing the thing you suggest so that's it guys um i hope you guys have taken something from it if you want to buy the book you can buy the book he has a lot of stories like this guy i don't know what he was in life but he makes the government he makes it like entrepreneurs so many people and he used to give this talk in so many places someone on my snapchat was like that this is the only book he has spent his money buying we like put it on ig story again so someone asked me do you think i should buy the book i think you should buy the book hope you have enjoyed this review if you want me to do more reviews like this on books i think are fantastic please um click the like button thank you thank you so much for staying through if you did and see you on the next episode guys bye bye